Django Fett. In the final years of the Republic, Django Fett was regarded the best bounty hunter in the galaxy. Fett is covered in a sleek armoured Mandalorian suit that conceals his identity. Hello! Welcome to Centurion's Corner and today I'm bringing you a review of Django Fett. Now this guy, he probably started it all. This is the godfather of Star Wars. And I think everyone overlooks that. He's the Fett. He's the father of Boba Fett who started the legacy of the Mandalorian. Before this guy was even about, there was Boba Fett and Mandalore and all these extra things that generated from Boba Fett. But now we've got the prequels and now the people who have been brought up the prequels, they know this as the godfather of all things Star Wars and Boba Fett and Mandalore and all that, all that history. But also, this guy is the father of all the clones. If it weren't for this guy, we wouldn't have Clone Wars. We wouldn't have Captain Rex, Wolf, Fordo, Fives, Echo, Five. No, but he said Fives. But there's hundreds of them. And this guy is the father of them. This guy has got the history and everything points down to this one guy. Thank you, Django Fett. So, back when it was all in back of the Attack of the Clones, which to be honest, probably <clears throat> the second worst movie out there of Star Wars. But, again, we had those cool scenes. We have Django Fett fighting against Obi-Wan on Kamino in the nice raining atmosphere. This guy was a jam. And he was um, played by Mr. Morrison. Again, can't remember his first name. And yeah, now we've got him recreated in 6 inch. I got this guy for $9.99 actually from, um, I've used them before, which is X, XS stock in the UK. They're, they're in Scotland. And um, yeah, I mean, this guy was $9.99. I, I, I snapped him up. What a bargain for like the bounty hunter from the prequels, you know? And um, yeah, I mean, he's really recreated really well. So here he is in his six inch form. So we can go over his accessories. So he comes with three accessories, I suppose. Um, I mean, two. he got two pistols. Uh, he got his backpack, which I would say is more part of Django Fett. Without his backpack, he's just got a hole in the back and it just doesn't look right. So he's the same as Django. But this one that Boba doesn't have has a removable helmet. So we can have a look at his uh, gun. And it's the Camino gun. It's done really nice. It's got the silver on there and you've got the little matted sort of darker grey blue for the handle. Just to show it off. Doesn't have any kind of um, rustic look or anything on there because it doesn't need it as it's supposed to be like really clean like Camino. And they just fit into his nice holsters there. And also they fit very nice in his hand with the hole that just pops over his finger. And the good thing about this Django Fett, and not a lot of the other Black Series have, he actually has a trigger finger on his left hand. So he can actually hold both. So why they stop there when they done Captain Rex a little bit later down the line, who's a dual wielder as well, really takes away from the character where they can't hold both of their guns. So also his other accessory then is his helmet. And again, it's done really nice. I just think maybe here, I know they had to probably put in a bit of extra plastic layer just to keep that kind of sort of light so it's not moving out and it's not going to rip too much but across here we've got the silver lines and the dark blue down here and the dark blue just to sort of distinguish between this sort of lighter blue and the silver and we've got a little dent up here and um, yeah it's done really nice and um, it's a little bit squidgy and so it's not really going to sort of take away much, too much of the paint as we take it on and off and we got a surprise Mr. Morrison here with his eyebrows looking slightly a little bit raised and a little bit weird. Um, I think you can see where the, the original line here should have been for his eyebrows. So I'm thinking where they might have mucked up these eyebrows really takes away from the character itself. I think if we sort of take that up there, it wouldn't be too much of um, I look really so I might even have a little look and play and see if I can redo eyebrows but uh, I'm not that great but uh, yeah I think they've done really well there so why is here we go straight into his articulation I'll keep his helmet on so we can see what he can get away with 
So he can still look up that far. He can look down this far. He can look left. He can look right. He's got a joint over his shoulder, which is a rotation. And he's got an elbow and he's got a rotation just above the elbow joint, just because he's got those wires there. And um, it's the same on this side as well. And he goes up to about 90 degrees for his elbows. He's got a rotation at the wrist and his hinge downwards at the hands due to his wrist gauntlets. And then he's got a spin there. He's got a little bit more of a crunch than what Boba Fett had. Not too much, but he hasn't got all the sort of extra bits down there. He can kick forward this far. And he's a little bit hindered because his holsters and all that are wrapped around his legs. And he can not really go back that far, but that's due to his, his big bum. He's got rotation at the upper fire, but again, it's hindered by the uh, glue on the uh, holsters. And he's got a double jointed knee that can come up this far. He's got a pivot and a rocker on his foot. And to be honest, manipulating this guy in uh, in cameras, uh, sorry, for photos for your cameras, is actually really good. You can get those kind of looks, you can get those sort of jumping back, sort of shooting and all that kind of malarkey as well with them. And to be honest, I haven't had any problems again with the photos. So stay tuned at the end and I'll show off some of his uh, articulation there, that you can, what you can do. And with that, we'll look at his sculpt. We already looked at his face, I suppose, but uh, here's another quick one. So we can just look from the side, just there. And then he's just got the normal kind of hair. But his helmet, again, we've got all the sort of details and bits on there. We've got this silver kind of Mandalorian armor stuck to this sort of like jacket part here, which is separated to his jumpsuit. And it's done really nice. We've got all the extra bits in there and it's it just looks like a kind of like a nice um, extra part to him. And we've got all the ripples and down there and done really well into his sort of like more sort of chrome gauntlets there. Into his sort of like more multiple pockets to his holsters. Unfortunately, all these parts here are not done silver. So I might give these a touch up just to give him that extra little bit of look on detail on there down to his legs and then uh, onto his plated feet. And then behind, it's more of the jumpsuit rather than any of the plating from behind. And we can take off this jetpack and he's got like the little loop bits down there and obviously the last back plate, but these little bits just plug into there. So it actually looks like the suit is connected to the jetpack rather than a plug in his back. And yeah, again, another well done bounty hunter for Hasbro. I mean. Some of these guys that are a little bit older, you know, I know they're bringing out the archive series and stuff like that, but again, it's another well done figure and it's another one that's deserving of a review from the shelf, you know. And this guy just sits actually on my bounty hunter shelf, he just sort of sits behind all the others. He used to be on my clone shelf, but the clones are kind of sort of uh, multiplied over the weeks. But um, yeah, I, another one, really well done. So guys, what's all your thoughts on Django Fett? Is he still one of your favourites? Would you prefer Boba Fett? Let me know in the comments down below. You can follow me on Instagram, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.